Hello there, Cancers. Uh, the first house here deals with your, it's con traditionally considered the rising sign, the face that you project out into the world and the energy that you bring on to the, this month with you and the way that other people perceive you, okay? So the Five of Wands is, first of all, a card about somebody who is, this is a conflict card, but when it shows up in the reverse, it's basically very conflict avoidant, which can be good or bad, depending on how, you know, you operate with this energy. And so, you know, first of all, conflict avoidant. The second thing that shows up with this card is, I feel like a lot of you might have been going back and forth with some major decision. So it's like an inner conflict that you that has been brewing for the past few months. You have either decided on something or the, the conflict has alleviated, has left your life for good, okay? So I feel like you're in a very genial type of mood. You're not looking for conflict, you're not looking for fights, and you are somebody that is quite diplomatic. And others, pe other people see you as somebody who is handling responsibilities. They're no longer struggling with between their mind and their heart. So somebody who's actually quite balanced, okay? So that's the first thing moving into this month. The second house deals with your values and your money. And we have here the moon showing up in the reverse position. So the moon is actually your ruling card. And uh, basically, you know, you, you are the sign that is heavily influenced by the moon. And uh, with the moon, it indicates emotions, like things that are under the radar, things that are very like um, um, under, like cloaked in the darkness of the night. So as it relates to your income and your money, there might be some clandestine, you know, um, underhanded type of dealings that you need to be aware of. And if you are engaging in these type of clandestine operations in order to make money, that is also showing up as well. And as well as people working heavily during the night shift in order to make money. So in the mundane sense, it can be just working the night shifts, transitioning into work that requires staying up um, very late at night to make money or, you know, uh, doing something like kind of um, covertly in order to make money. As it relates to your value system, because this card is in the reverse position, you want to be very, very careful, okay? First of all, I see conflict avoidant. And then second thing, I see you showing up in the reverse position. And um, this is also the card of Pisces, but the point being here is that you really need to stick to your guns. If somebody is doing something that you feel like is morally questionable, you need to call them out on it. And I feel like you might not do that this month. Okay, for whatever reason, there might be work constraints. It might be something that is authorized by somebody who should know better or you believe like, oh, you know, if it's um, authorized by the person in, in a position of authority, then obviously it's go okay. But if it doesn't really, you know, pass that moral judgment test, you might need to bring certain things into question, okay? So like bring it up to a supervisor's attention, for example. So I do feel some unquestionable things happening in the um, money income department, and it might affect your work. So just be careful about that, okay? Others of you, in terms of how you make money, you might be linked up here with a Pisces, a Pisces um, person, so uh, male or female. And this is somebody that might be coming through with income generating activities. Pisces is also, you know, he the, the energy is heavy for creativity as well. And I do see art, music, creativity. So some, some creative projects that are coming through. Um, you might have a business partner that is also linked up with this house, okay? So a business partner, somebody bringing a lot of ideas, um, some of them might not be realistic, but I do feel it's important for you to be discerning and to pick and choose how you make money and, and you know, where your values are as well. OK, so it's a, a mixed bag, but I do feel it's important for you to really stand up for the things that you believe in, in your value system. All right. So if something doesn't pass that, you know, moral judgment test, then bring it up to somebody else's attention. All right. Third house deals with siblings and your communication. We have here the King of Cups in the reverse. So this is, um, if you have siblings, you know, step siblings, um, if you're in a blended family, even adopted siblings, whoever it is that you consider siblings, okay? This is going to be a sibling of yours, possibly an older brother or an older sister. 
So a um, another Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. This is somebody who is a little bit irresponsible. And I feel like they are, um, I feel almost like um, they, they can be younger than you two, but the energy is somebody who's very fixed in their opinion. And um, they might be operating from a place of, you know, lack of sympathy, lack of empathy for other people. And I feel like they have the potential to be very loving, very nurturing at their best, but at their worst, they can be a little bit controlling, a little bit manipulative. And I feel that you're going to hear a lot of um, information, news coming through for this month from this person or related to the activities that this person is engaged in. And all of it is like cause for concern. And what I'm also feeling with this card here is it's somebody that needs a lot of attention. They need some, some, uh, they need some caring, some nurturing. Okay. So I feel like this is somebody that you're dealing with as a sibling as well. If you are without a sibling, so if you are, for example, the only child as it relates to your communication and even, um, even for those of you with siblings overall, as it relates to your communication for this month, be very, very honest, be very straightforward, and be very, very truthful. Um, this card indicates manipulation when it shows up in the reverse. So it's sort of like distorting the truth, manipulating the truth, hiding facts. And it's not like outright lies. It's very covert, very subtle, hard to catch in the act. And so I feel like many of you might be inclined to distort the truth. Or might be inclined to you know not reveal all the information so like lying by omission so i feel this is coming through from your communication overall so be careful about this okay um, a lot of you might be in a position where you want to persuade an audience and so you have to spin a story a specific way so i feel that energy coming through or you might be forced to do that in some way as as it relates to your communication but aim to be as truthful and as honest and as sincere as possible because it's not a good energy to bring into January and the rest of 2017. So just something to keep in mind, okay? Now your fourth house deals with the family and the early childhood um, environment that you grew up in. So it could be the family that you grew up in or the family that you're hoping to create for this yourself. And as well, it deals with the mother, okay? so. I feel like a lot of you, um, the four of wands, first of all, this is a card about marriage. This is a card about a stable home. If it's in the upright position, when it's in the reverse position, it basically means either a broken home or some type of a dysfunction, deep rooted dysfunction within the home. The home environment was not harmonious and, um, it's surrounded by both of these cards, which indicates to me, uh, an air of suspicion, an air of like um, suppress passion, suppress rage, suppress like even hostility, something like that happening in the home environment. Okay. And what I'm also feeling as well in the home that you're hoping to create for yourself, I do feel some instability. Uh, there might be like a pay, like a rent increase. There might be people moving in, people moving out in your home. So you might be subletting your apartment, for example, or you might be renting out your house, your physical environment and letting new people come in. So there's some shifts, some changes in the home environment and it's, it's a little bit unstable. It's a little bit unsettling. And then for others of you, I feel like there's just overall movement in housing. Okay. So that's what's coming through for the fourth house. Um, the four of wands, I feel like, you know, it, it's usually uh, a divorce, like usually a, a divorce, like somebody moving in, somebody moving out of a home. So I feel a lot of you might be uh, contending with that, for example. And I feel that, you know, there's people um, moving in, moving out. So I, I feel like in the mundane sense, it could just be, you know, change in roommates, change in living, housing environment. Okay. Okay, so your fifth house deals with recreation, fun, and creativity. And in some instances, it can also indicate children as well. For the sake of this reading, I'm just going to simplify it and just um, focus on, you know, uh, creativity. So we do have here the hangman in the reverse position. 
And the hangman in the reverse position is a card about sacrifice. And it's also a card about like um, being tied up, you know, like literally being tied up. So I feel like a lot of you are very, very, have been very busy for the past five months. And you are going to be busy. So I, I do see this, you know, hitting the ground running, working overtime, working night shifts even. And if you're working night shifts, then, you know, if your friends and other people that you're dealing with are not uh, are sleeping at night then there's opportunities those opportunities for going out is going to be limited and i feel overall being tied up at work so that you're not able to have the leisure time to devote to recreational activities going to the gym you know doing artwork and things like that with the hangman in the reverse as well i feel like you know your money house is looking just a little bit weak so i feel that it might not um, allow you to go out and having and have like extravagant fun as much as you're used to okay now the sixth house deals with work this is actual work uh, daily routine and as well as your health and let me just talk about this first in your work environment there is a figure like this okay this is somebody who's very stoic who's quite firm and I almost want to say strict okay so you're dealing with somebody in a position of high status and high uh, authority and this is somebody who's quite picky about who they um, who they hire who they allow on board and so you're dealing with somebody who might be a public figure who might be like in a position of authority um, they can be quite demanding but I feel like they're very fair whatever they ask of you they will compensate you adequately so I feel like, you know, if you are, if your money house is being controlled by somebody like this, they might require that you work around the clock, hence not being able to go out. And if you're dealing with this person as well, I feel like they are very fair minded and they are, you know, generally, um, they can be very generous as well, but they, they always make the right things, uh, d decisions. So I feel that's what's happening here in your work environment. And then for others of you, you might be embodying the energy of this person where you are in charge of people, you are training people, or you are kind of like managing people. So the emperor is a very, very powerful presence of somebody who has a, um, who is either in a position of authority or who is working under somebody who has a lot of skills, who has a lot of knowledge, okay? So this is a really good person to have in your sixth house of work. As it relates to your health with the emperor, I do feel some health related issues coming through from the paternal side of the family. You might hear news of uh, somebody through the paternal side um, having you know, some health issues or there might be some type of a hereditary uh, trait passed down through the father side, paternal side of the family. You know, I, I, I do see something related to um, uh, I, I feel like sa they're saying like same patterns being repeated. So same living styles being repeated, same habits being repeated. So for example, if your father is a smoker and you take up smoking, that can be, you know, same patterns, same habits being repeated. And then the same health problems um, go along with that as well. So just be careful about your health. Um, the emperor is somebody that basically is the card of Aries. It also rules the head. And so um, I might, I feel like a lot of you might be, um, your sleeping cycles are a little bit worrisome. So I feel like a lot of headaches, a lot of readjusting, a lot of um, lightheadedness, dizziness, headaches overall, okay? Um, I do see blur vision for some of you and things related to the head, even toothache affecting or invoking headaches as well, okay? So just be careful about that. Um, whatever congestion or whatever like um, pain you are experiencing with the head for this month, it is really important to get it checked out because I feel like it's going to be bothersome and it's not, it, it's, it's very uh, deeply rooted. So I feel teeth issues, um, you know, ear aches and things like that. If not treated, it can exacerbate. So keep in mind we're doing this so that it, uh, it can, you know, prevent you from heading down the wrong path throughout 2017. So whatever is affecting you this month as it pertains to the head, get it checked out because I feel like it's going to be bothersome further down the line, okay? It, it can get serious further down the line. It's just something to keep in mind about, okay? We're doing this as a preventative measure. So if it resonates with you, try to take it, uh, get it taken care of as early as you can so that it doesn't drag on through the rest of 2017. 
as it relates to your daily activities, daily routine. I feel like a lot of you are um, in either like office job or in a position where a lot of people look up to you. And so what you say and what you do, it, it really matters. So you might have to change your routine um, because of that. You know, you might have uh, always gone to the same shop, but now you have to go to a different shop, mainly to avoid the crowd. And I do see like um, on the one hand, there's a lot of like, um, I, I feel like there's a lot of energy here for stagnancy, but with this energy, I feel like you might be a public figure and you're going to have to dodge the crowd. So you have to like switch up your routine somehow and finding a smart way to do that. Um, I do see a lot of like bulking up for men and women, Cancerian watching this, lifting weights, doing a lot of like uh, upper body building. So that looks really good, okay? It, it looks very, very good for you, you know, starting your New Year's resolution early, I guess. In terms of your seventh house, we have here, the seventh house rules relationship and relationship in work or relationships in, um, you know, roman romance. So this is um, partnerships and work, partnerships and romance. We have here the seven of pentacles. And first of all, you know, the people that you're socially dating, casually dating, um, it's gonna fall in your fifth house. And the people that you are in a relationship with, either a marriage, living together, etc., is going to fall in your seventh house here. And this is the card that represents stable relationships and partnerships. Um, if you are in a partnership uh, for work or with another person, I feel that a lot of you are waiting on some joint financial ventures. You might have applied for loans and you're waiting to hear back from those institutions to see if you would qualify for those loans. And it's a very positive card that basically means things will start to come in for you, okay? Uh, you might also be in a position where a lot of people are soliciting you to partner up with them romantically or even in partnership, and you're doing some reassessment. And I feel that, you know, you're, you have a lot of things on your plate right now when it comes to income and work. You might have to be selective and you might have to turn down some options, okay? So it's overall, it looks good. In terms of romance specifically, in terms of romance, I feel that um, a lot of you might be in a position where, be very careful about this, and I feel like you're in a position where you're reassessing a state of your relationship. And um, what I mean by that is, I feel like you're involved with somebody, right, who is a little bit just, um, they have a lot of redeeming qualities like great they're a great person they have a good heart and i feel that you know uh, there's like one minor thing that you don't like about them it, it might not even be minor but let's just say you know they have like six really really amazing qualities that you absolutely adore and then they have this one thing that you don't like and for some reason you're not looking at the whole package you're looking and dwelling on this one thing that you don't like so be very careful of the tendency to like um, dwell on the negatives when it concerns your romantic partner or even holding a grudge or even like, um, you know, like find like being too critical of them and touching on this sore spot or this sensitivity that they have. So just be very, very courteous of the other person. Okay. Um, so I feel that's what's happening in your romantic sector. And I would advise you just, you know, I, I see this energy coming through a lot for cancers. So don't dwell on the negatives. You know, the, the person you're involved with, I feel like they have a lot of redeeming features. And likewise, the energy can flow both ways. You might be involved with somebody who's doing this to you as well. And so just keep, you know, that into perspective, okay? And it, it's very, very easy to nitpick for anybody. It is easy to nitpick. But it's also um, more meaningful to look at that person and to really, um, to really like absorb all the good qualities that they have. Okay. So the eighth house deals with joint finances. The eighth house is actually really complicated in astrology because it deals with se uh, death, sex, rebirth, regeneration. For the purposes of this reading, and just because I'm looking at this to provide guidance. Um, I'm just going to say like, you know, joint finances overall. What we have here is the lovers and the lovers is, um, it's a very, very positive card that basically means some contract being signed between people, some type of an engagement, some type of, a, um, I, I guess coming together, like joining together in order to make money. 
And I feel that, you know, both parties are on board, both parties are fair, and both parties are very similar. Like they're, um, one person is like taking on uh, one aspect of the business and the other person is taking on uh, the other, for example. So there is a great potential here to delegate. There is great harmony as well as it relates to joint finances. I feel that a lot of you are pooling finances together with another person. And then I feel that for others of you, um, you're finding out, I feel like you're finding ways to optimally, um, like, I, I feel like you're planning for the future. So I feel that you're pulling your resources and you're finding out ways to either invest, what opportunities to invest in and what is available to you so that you are able to, you know, multiply your money. Okay, so this is a very positive card as it deals with, um, I want to say like as it deals with joint finances um the other message that i just came uh, that just came through here is um the lovers is um, a card about options and choices as well and when it rules your joint finances i feel like a lot of you are making it big so i feel like you're coming into financial abundance and it's mainly because it's linked up with the partner and so you're thinking long term, like, how are we going to spend this money? So I, I feel like a lot of you might be looking into property, like property for you and your partner, or even investment property. You might also be thinking about, you know, taking trips together, taking the relationship to the next level and, you know, pulling your resources and things like that. Okay, so it's an overall very, very positive card. So. The ninth house deals with higher education, it deals with long distance travel, it deals with religion and philosophies, okay, like the things that we really believe in. Rather than values, it deals with like the things that we think about, or lofty ideas and things like that. Um, so first of all, um, as it relates to higher education, I do have a lot of students that watch my videos. And so let me just talk about this as a student, okay? So higher education, for those of you who are pursuing higher education, this is a very positive card that basically indicates you're gonna be able to get, you know, the, the, the good news regarding acceptance, regarding, um, you know, universities and things like that wanting you on their team. So it's very positive. I do see like, you know, um, the March time frame being a really good time to get feedback and things like that to get early acceptance even so it looks good and as it relates to like um, exams you know midterms finals um, and, and grades and all those things it looks very very positive where you're kind of like um, top of the, of your class so it looks very good as it relates to higher education as well if you are thinking about going back to school um, either continuing a coursework or continuing to do something related to higher education, I do feel that you are in a very powerful position, not only to be a student, but to, you know, teach as well. So if you're thinking about that, linking yourself up with an institution of learning would be very beneficial for you because I feel like, you know, they, they need your skills, they need your expertise. So getting a teaching gig is going to be very beneficial for you. Uh, long term, like long distance travel, I do feel that, you know, there might be some travels um, talked about and I feel like a mother figure is going to somehow either travel with you or you are traveling to see a mother if uh, you are living far away from your family. And so that's coming through when it comes to, you know, long distance travel. Um, if you are like, if you have a relationship partner from a distance, I do feel there's talks about long distance travel to come see them be very careful about pregnancy. Okay. Both of these cars linked up together. We have a couple here with the emperor and the empress and we have the lovers linking up. So it's high pregnancy time. Um, so I feel as well, some of you might literally be pregnant or you might have, um, might be bogged down with the responsibilities of child rearing or even you know taking care of practical responsibilities within your household that you might not be able to travel okay so that's coming through for the I would say the first six months of this year in 2017 okay so what I also feel here is um, this is coming in, in as an advice I feel a lot of you they're saying and obviously this is gonna apply for some not everybody that's watching 
um, they're, what they're saying is this, okay? It's really important for you to incorporate the things that you believe in, which is your ideologies, your values as well. Um, incorporate what your mom has taught you versus what your dad has taught you. I feel like there is an energy here about um, inheriting some some traits with uh, from, coming through from the father figure that you're not very proud of. And I feel like growing up, you might say like, oh, I would never be like him or, you know, I don't like it when he does that. And then you you find yourself as an adult, um, the, the older you get, the more you realize that actually I'm a lot like my father. So I feel that coming through for many of you, um, you know, the, the, the ones that this apply to. And so, you know, as much as you try to run away from it, I feel like it still affects you. And so you want to, you know, spend this month trying to rectify that situation however you can, um, either through behavioral change physically to, you know, not behave the way that he, he behaves. And likewise, I feel that even though you might not be proud of these, you know, his actions, you're still following in his footsteps in some way. And I feel that you're, 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 um, you're being very hard on yourself because of, because of it. So they're saying, you know, like you're, you're dealing with some inner conflict as it plays out in your life where you're just like, I will never be like him. And yet you are coming into, you know, this month or this year behaving in a way that you are not, um, proud of yourself about. So find a way to rectify that. Okay. It's going to be something that affects you throughout 2017. I feel that coming through. Um, what I'm also feeling here is the way to break away from that. The way to really break away from that is to really look at your mother. If you're dealing with that, for example, look at your mother and look at how she is living. And they're, they're saying here joint. Um, I want to say like, building your foundation and you know creating that financial security for yourself is going to allow you to be an independent person so this means breaking out of um, financial dependencies okay seeking ways to either create for yourself that financial foundation rebuild it yourself so that you can be really really free to do whatever it is that you want and you're not going to be restricted by the people that you you might have in the past been financially dependent on so that's one way to break out of this rut coming through for 2017 and it, it might be the only way that you can you know um, come to terms and rectify these inner conflicts that you have within yourself so which brings us to the next point here um, the 10th house deals with your career and it also deals with your father. And one of the reasons why I brought up the father image is um, I want to talk about this card, but I want to provide a little bit of context first. So the father figure is showing up here in, in the same suit as you, a water sign. Uh, you might literally have a, a father that is a water sign, which is, you know, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, Sun, Moon, or Rising. And uh, when the water sign is showing up in the reverse position, it's basically somebody that is a little bit kind of... Um, they're, they're, I, I want to say, they don't operate from an emotional perspective, okay? So they, they might, like, be very responsibility-oriented, where they go through the motions of, um, you know, being the, the breadwinner. They go through the motion of being the father. They go through the motions of being the husband. But emotionally, they're just not happy. They, they were kind of checked out. They were just, you know going through the motions without being emotionally invested. So I feel some type of estrangement here when it relates to the father. Okay. And um, what I'm also feeling with this card in terms of your career and your career, I feel like with the um, Knight of Cups in the reverse, this is a career track where I feel like you're forced to do things that you don't really believe in. You're forced to say things that might not um, be representative of your own values or the values that you want to promote. So I feel like you might be, they, they want to say like, you might want to be careful about selling out for some of you. Okay. So just be careful about that. I also feel in your career sector, when it comes with the Knight of cups in the reverse, you might be literally dealing with somebody who is just completely insincere. They don't really believe in the things that they're they're saying, and yet they're just in a position 
um, because it's comfortable or because it's uh, expected of them. So I feel like there is a lot of covert energy in your career sector and you want to, um, it's, it's, it's almost like, it's almost like this is not set in stone. It's kind of volatile and things can change one day to the next. And so I feel that if this is the career track that you're in, you're going to need to find something a little bit more stable because the 10th house is directly related. Um, well, it's directly across from the fourth house. And if the fourth house, which is, you know, your housing environment and your career, if these are not working in accordance with one another, one can dis destabilize the other. And I feel like that's what's happening right now. So just something for you guys to think about long term coming into 2017. Um, if you're in, co in a career track where you feel like, you know, um, you, you feel like you have to misrepresent your values, definitely seek a new one. Seek a new career track. If you feel like you're just going through the motions because the job is comfortable, I feel that returning back to school is going to be very good for some of you. It's going to allow you to figure out, like have a better sense of direction about what you need to do. And I mentioned this last month for the mid-month reading. I feel like a lot of you need to be in school because you're very bright and you have potential. And if you're in a career track where you're just going through the motions because of financial security or whatever it is, you're not going to be happy and you're underemployed. You're underutilizing your skills and your talents and that's not good, okay? So just something to think about for those of you who are dealing with that. Now, um, let me see here. The 11th house deals with friends and group associations. So we have the three of wands and this is basically waiting on friends, waiting on people to call, waiting on people to like, um, it's funny, waiting on people to um, reach out to you. And I, I say it's funny because the fifth house is the hangman where you know, you're, you're not going out as much. And then with your friends, you're waiting on them. So I feel like some of them, you, you might like be very busy. So you're not able to respond to them in a uh, swift manner. And I feel like some of them have moved on. They're like moving on with their lives. There's a lot of travel regarding your friends. So they might be, you know, from more of like a worldly crowd. They might be of different, you know, cultural um, background, ethnic background, for example. So I feel like you might not have the opportunities to go out as much and to reconnect with old friends. So I feel like there's an energy about them turning their back. Okay. So just be aware of that. Try to be a little bit more diligent about reaching out. Okay. Um, <clears throat> as it relates to your group association, this is a very, very good card. And I feel like new career path, new income generating, uh, opportunities, will be made in available to you if you expand your social, you know, groups and even your um the organizations that you get involved with the the group associations that you link up yourself with, okay? So there's a lot of opportunities coming through, even a job offer for a long-term career is what I'm seeing here. Now the 12th house is basically house of secrets. It's a very psychic house as well. So let me say that based on this spread, you have a lot of spiritual energy coming through. We have the emperor and the empress, and now we have the high priestess. So the high priestess is basically your intuition kicking in overdrive. And this is basically spiritual guidance coming through, mainly because you're doing something you're not supposed to. Okay. And that's going to apply. I feel like a lot of you are in a position at work or something where you feel like you have to compromise your values. And then other people it's kind of like you feel like there's some shady energy going on in your work sector or even in your career and you're not really sure where to turn or who to turn to to confront this situation and then others you might be kind of like lost for a career track you might just be like i'm not really emotionally happy anymore i want to change my career and you don't really know how to go about it or you don't really know like what's appropriate for you so we have the spiritual card coming through in your 12th house and the 12th house deals with secrets institutions as well as um it's a psychic house so this is like intuitive knowledge coming through very strongly so that you can auto correct the course of your life or even you know have a, a sense of guidance as to what you need to do and what you have to move forward with um this is a card about secrets overall. So it's a it's a, a card regarding secrets, things that are being concealed, 
in the house of secrets. So I'm going to pull out a few more cards just to see what's going on with you. I feel like, you know, your communication is problematic. So this is like um, misrepresenting yourself or saying things that might not be entirely truthful. And it's also showing up here. So I feel like you might be projecting some qualities. You might be like this, so you're expecting other people to be like this. Or other people are behaving this way to you, so you're withholding information. So either way, let me see what the High Priestess relates to. Which area are we looking at here? Okay. So I have the Queen of Swords and the Three of Pentacles. Okay. So let me just say, um, this is your, your harboring. I feel like you are holding in some type of secrets, okay? And I feel like it might have been for two years. So you're holding something in for two years. Um, that's interesting. So first of all, we are um, dealing here with an air sign. So this is an Aquarius, a Gemini, or a Libra. And this might be somebody that was uh, demanding answers of you, that was trying to be truthful, and that was like, you know, they're beckoning you to come forward. And it's also linked up here with the Three of Pentacles. This could be somebody that is a, um, I want to say like a, a work partner, or somebody in your work environment, or somebody that um, might you might be involved with in the work environment, like even romantically. So there's some some secrets that you're harboring related to you know something that happened two years ago and it, it deals with some work environment so i'm going to leave it at that okay so this obviously if it's coming from you you already know what it pertains to so just be careful about secrets coming to light so i feel like you're holding something back like you're not you're not being truthful about something here um wherever whatever that means you might not be truthful about how you make your money so I'm just going to leave it at that. There's no judgment here. It's just something for you to keep uh, an eye out for, okay? Because I feel like whatever happens in January, um, it's going to set the tone for 2017. And so these questions, <coughs> questions regarding, you know, how you make your money might come up. Just something to think about. So, you know, have a cover story if you're doing something you're not supposed to. Or if you are um, making money in some type of a clandestine way, just have a cover story ready, okay? Because I feel like it's going to be coming up either this month or sometime later on. And you can't really dodge those questions later on. So just have a cover story. Okay, so they're saying two years or two months, okay? So something that happened two years ago and then even something that happened two months ago. Okay, so we have a lot of powerful cards here, and um, let me just talk about this card, because while I was shuffling, some messages came through. So this is basically, you know, the, the overall theme regarding your love relationship. You're going to have to do some reassessment. I feel like same patterns being uh, repeated over and over and over and over again. And so um, I feel like the last relationship you were in I do feel that you know so some some issue that might have been unresolved is coming back in so whatever you know whoever you consider as your last relationship partner I feel like whatever you were dissatisfied with with them the same issue might creep in to the present relationship for those of you who are in a present relationship or I feel like you're you're like attracting the same types of people so just be careful about that they're saying something about seven years ago. Seven years ago, there was a person in your life and I feel like you put them on a pedestal. And I do sense like something like a karmic lesson, so something about karma um, coming full circle based on that relationship, okay? So let me just go into your reading because um, it's we'll, we'll flush some of these ideas out, okay? Uh, let me talk about the past first because um, it looks good. So there was a major, major relationship that you were emotionally invested in. And I felt that um, I feel almost as if responsibilities from both sides were weighing in and really affecting the relationship. OK, so it was a re relationship where you and the other person were almost like soulmates. 
So this is a two of cups, which is a harmonious relationship, a relationship where two people really not only love each other, but they like each other a lot and they, they like each other as friends. So I feel that you were in a relationship with somebody that, that was really good to you and you were really good to them and it was a soulmate type of a connection. And I feel like somewhere along the way, you had a lot of responsibilities, a lot of issues crept into the relationship. And I feel like it might be financial. It might also just be um, practical responsibilities, you know, day-to-day -day operations. And then likewise, they had their own issues, the same thing, which is practical day-to-day -day operations or even like financial issues cr uh, creeping into the relationship. And both parties felt very, very stifled it felt very uh demanding and it felt like very heavy and so you had to let that relationship go and i feel like what you're thinking about here is we have the knight of swords and this is an air sign an aquarius a gemini or a libra and we have as well the four of cups if you have left that relationship and you're still single and you're still looking around I feel that the options that are coming into the picture are not able to match with the image of the person that you have from the past. Okay, like the, the options that are coming through are not like to your liking where they can replace this significant relationship that you've had. So it might have been seven years ago for some of you is what I'm, I'm sensing. So I feel like, you know, in 2016, I kept saying, like, you need to close some doors. You need to move on with your life. You need to, like, let some people go. And I feel that many of you have not. Many of you have not. And so you're, you're, you're still carrying residual energy into 2017 with you, which is not a smart thing to do. Okay, so close some doors if you need to, because this is still, like, reassessing waiting waiting for a situation to pan out waiting for things to bear fruit and so you're still waiting looking back back at the past waiting on something and it's not a good idea to do that with this new year this new year universal year is a number one year it's about starting over it's about you know planting new fruits like planting new seeds and moving on okay last year 2016 was the number nine end of a cycle so don't bring residual energies into the new year with you okay so this might be the person that you're thinking about here this is an aquarius gemini libra sun moon um or rising and this is somebody who's very courageous um i feel like a lot of the times they will always come to your rescue they're quite reliable i feel and they 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 have like a little bit of a quick tongue they might be a little bit careless with their words they're a little bit insensitive okay and I feel like you're thinking about this person because this person was the great love. And if not the great love, then uh, this is somebody that is coming through for this month that you're still thinking about. Okay. Um, fun, exciting, uh, a little bit um, curt with their words, a little bit can be a little bit like judgmental, but I feel like they are, they're, they're a good person to have on your side because they're very courageous. The foundation here is something that you is is known to be true. Something that you are um, you already know, and you're coming into January with this knowledge. Okay, so we have here the high priestess in the reverse, and the high priestess in the reverse is truth coming to light. Um, whatever was hidden is going to be revealed. So earlier, you know, when we did the general reading. I feel as if somebody is harboring, hiding some secrets. It might be from your end. Or you might have like withheld information and I feel like it's going to be revealed. So be very, very careful. If not, it has already been revealed um, the end of December. And we do have here the tower, which basically means um, destruction of some type of a relationship because it was not built on firm footing. So this is already something that was coming into the picture. Destruction of something, a relationship, I feel. Uh, truth that can be very hurtful and very like um, life-changing as it pertains to relationship and romance and I also feel like a relationship needs to be assessed you know reassessed because it's not built on f solid footing it's built on lofty dreams and lofty goals and I feel like it's not going to come together so I feel like you're repeating some type of same pattern here um, the center of this spread we do have the ten of swords which is 
betrayal. This is a card about, you know, being abandoned, feeling left out and feeling almost as if the person that you really trusted couldn't be trusted, okay? So I feel like you're coming into this month dealing with this. Um, and I'm sorry if you're going through this, but it's a, a pretty painful type of energy. But the good news is that it's coming to an end. I feel some of you might be starting new relationships and you have like um, some residual uh, relationship hanging over you. So you might be separated from your partner, right? If you're married, you might be separated and there are legal issues that you're dealing with right now and it's dragging on and it's quite hurtful, okay? And then for others of you, you might have met somebody else. You might have um, met like a new person and I feel that you're trying to get the legal proceeding started. You're still separated, but not legally divorced. And you're trying to move on with the new person. And then for others, I feel like you might be with one person wanting to end that relationship in order to move on with another person. So either way, I feel like you need to like get something started, like get something going and get rolling in a new direction. There's a lot of residual energies here being carried over. What is coming through? We have the moon, which is kind of like, it's um, things that are hidden as well. So this is a con confusing communication, things that are very, very unclear, and you're hoping to flush out this energy and you're waiting for the fog to lift before you can make a decision, which is understandable. And we have the three of wands as well. And the three of wands uh, in the reverse basically means that, you know, rather than waiting, waiting, I feel like a lot of you are gonna charge ahead Okay, so I feel overall that, especially for those of you who are dating, you know, socially dating and things like that, um, I almost feel as if you might, the options are not that great for this month. And my advice is if you are dating, I see heavy water energy and I see like air signs. So Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra, and then heavy water energy, um, so like Pisces comes to mind, Piscean type of energy. And what they are advising you is, you know, I feel like the water sign would be a lot more appropriate. A lot of you are thinking about an air sign, an Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, Sun, Moon, or Rising. And I feel like this can be a good romantic partner as well. But they're, they're not going to be as sensitive as you need a partner to be. So just be mindful about that. I mean, you can tell them to, you know, be a little bit more sensitive, but I feel like innately it's going to require some work. Okay. They're not, um, they're, they're not like they're an air sign. So they operate more on the higher chakras and they might be very blunt and very curt with their words because it's a knight. It's somebody that charges in very fast and they, they, they don't really sugarcoat things. And um, I feel like you might be dealing with somebody like this on the dating environment and you feel almost as if they're a little bit hurtful, they're a little bit abrasive. And then others of you who, I, I see a lot of people transitioning between relationships, which mm, is good, transitioning between relationships. And I feel like a lot of information has come to light where you're going to have to decide how to move forward with a relationship. I do see secrets being revealed. And I do feel that the secrets that have been revealed pertains to situations that have been problematic, relationships that have been problematic and built on unstable foundations to begin with, okay? So I see, you know, seven is a very spiritual number. So it, it it's also the ruler of Neptune. So I feel that there's a lot of things being kept under the radar. There might have been lies, deception, and you know, lies catching up, snowballing out of control, and things like that. So that's what's coming through for this month. It doesn't look great, okay? I, I apologize for the grim reading. I'm going to be back for the mid-month reading, and hopefully we can flush out this energy and to figure out. Um, hopefully it'll clear up, honestly. But I do wish you all the best. Um, take care. Bye-bye.